Hello, I'm Mr. Dove, and welcome to Bio Lessons to Go. This is Introduction to Genetics and Chromosomal Theory. So our first question is, what is genetics? Well, genetics can be defined as the branch of biology that studies heredity. And basically, what we're doing is we're looking at traits or characteristics that can be passed down from parents to offspring. Now, when we look at offspring, like this little baby monkey here, we see that it resembles its parent. And one of the reasons that offspring resemble their parents is because parents pass on genetic material to their offspring in the form of genes. And what a gene is, is a set of instructions that's going to determine the traits of an organism. So what are genes? Well, a gene is a sequence of DNA, and that DNA uh, thread is going to build chromosomes. Now, each organism is going to have a unique number of chromosomes. So let's take a look at a human. In humans, we have 46 chromosomes. Uh, each chromosome is going to have a twin. You inherited one chromosome from your mom, and the other chromosome you got from your dad. The one you get from your mom is called maternal chromosome, and the one that you got from your dad is going to be called paternal. So since each uh, human body has 46 chromosomes, that means we get 23 from our mom and 23 from our dad. Now, if we zoom in at these uh, twin uh, chromosomes, one from our mom and one from our dad, um, what we're going to be looking at is a homologous pair. Homo is a prefix, which means the same, and logos means shape. So each chromosome in a homologous pair um, look very much the same. They're going to be the same size, and they're going to be carrying the same uh, traits, the same genes that are, con that are going to control the inherited characteristics. So um, in terms of our 46 chromosomes, this is a picture, a little cartoon picture of chromosome pair 11. And so these would be genes that we inherit from our mom. And then these would be the homologous genes that we would uh, inherit from our father. And then here we've got chromosome number 17. Uh, notice it's a little bit smaller, but they're homologous. Um, they have the same shape. They're carrying the same sequence of genes that control those inherited characteristics. Now, many traits have alternate forms of a gene, and we call these alleles. So homologous chromosomes can carry the same allele, or it could carry a different one. In the example here in this picture, we've got some a uh, pair of homologous chromosomes that came from a flower. Um, and uh, one of the chromosomes that it got from one of its parents contains the allele for purple flowers. And on the other chromosome that it got from the other parent contains the alleles for white flowers. So uh, each trait has oftentimes two alternate forms. And this flower could have inherited uh, two purple alleles or two white alleles, but in this case, it got one purple and one white. Now, when we look at the alleles and how they work together, uh, sometimes one allele will actually mask the expression of the other. The allele that covers the other is called the dominant allele, while the covered allele, the one that gets masked, is called the recessive allele. So let's look at the trait for earlobes. Um, this earlobe is what we call unattached, and uh, this earlobe is called attached. You notice how the skin here is attached to the face. Well, your uh, earlobe type uh, is controlled by two alternate forms of an allele. The dominant allele codes or gives you um, the trait of unattached earlobes. Whereas the recessive, the one that gets masked, would give you unattached earlobes. Uh, 
So depending upon which alleles you inherit, you'll either have attached or unattached earlobes. If you get both dominant alleles, one from your mom and one from your dad, then you're going to have unattached earlobes. You're pure for that trait. You only have genes, uh, you only have alleles for unattached earlobes. Um, in some cases, you could inherit one dominant gene from one parent and one recessive gene from the other parent. And this would still give you unattached earlobes because the dominant allele is going to mask or cover up that recessive one. Now, sometimes you might get uh, recessive alleles, one recessive allele from each parent, in which case you don't have any alleles that give you the uh, unattached earlobe, and so that means the only thing you could be is attached. So our uh, physical appearance then uh, is determined by our genes. The term that we use to describe that physical appearance, that observable trait, is what we call the phenotype. The phenotype is the physical description, has the same beginning uh, sound. Phenotype is the physical description of that organism. Whereas the genes that give you that physical appearance is going to be called our genotype. It's the type of genes, the genotype. So if we look here um, at this example with these moths, there's two different phenotypes for moths. There's dark moths and light moths. If you get two dominant genes, your genotype is going to give you the dark phenotype um, because dark is dominant over light. If you get one dominant and one recessive, you're still going to have the dark phenotype. Your physical appearance is determined by your genes. The only way to show the light phenotype is if you get only recessive alleles. So what we're seeing here is it's the genes, the alleles that are carried on the chromosomes, which are determining our physical appearance. So when our parents pass on genes, they're helping us to determine what our physical appearance is going to be. So as you can see, there are at least three different gene combinations that you can inherit from your parents, at least three different genotypes um, that we can see. So we need to have a way to be able to describe the various genotypes um, that we encounter as we study genetics. Now, if you inherit two of the same alleles from your parents, you are said to be homozygous. In fact, the prefix homo is going to mean same. So if we look at our example homologous chromosomes, homo meaning same, or homologous chromosomes, down here um, we see that this individual has inherited uh, a dominant allele from its mother and a dominant allele from its father. We have two dominant alleles. They're both the same. They're both dominant alleles. So we say that they are homozygous dominant for that particular trait. Similarly, uh, we see that they have inherited two recessive alleles, one from their mother and one from their father. And so we describe them as being homozygous recessive for that particular trait. Now, if you inherit the two different alleles for the trait, you are actually said to be heterozygous. Hetero means other or different. You might remember when we were talking about autotrophs versus heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are the other feeders. They have to feed on different things in order to obtain their nutrients. Heterozygous individuals, they have uh, two different alleles for that trait. So if we look at our example, we have a dominant B allele and a recessive B allele. Um, they're going to look like the dominant trait because they have the dominant gene, but because that's masking the recessive. And so we say that they're heterozygous, one dominant and one recessive. Now, there are additional synonyms that can be used to describe these genotypes. For example, oftentimes you'll, um, you'll see that uh, homozygous individuals are described as purebred um, because they only have you know, one type of allele, only dominant or only recessive. Whereas heterozygous individuals are sometimes going to be described as hybrid. Those will be synonyms for that. So understanding genes 
and the role of chromosomes and inheritance is essential to the study of genetics and understanding how traits are inherited from one generation to another. So as we further explore genetics, uh, we're going to continue to come back and look at genes, and we're going to look at chromosomes and how they're passed from parents to offspring so that we can better understand um, genetics and inheritance.